Okay. Well, I am wearing my Loki t-shirt today because we're doing t-shirts. I don't usually wear this kind of t-shirt, but I have learned to like Loki, not from the series, the Marvel series, but from this book, A Witch's Heart. Um, in it, Loki is the trickster as usual. The thing is that his tricks always blow up in his face. And so that's why I'm a fan of Loki. Um, that and he, he had two wives in this book, but he loved both of them. He had four children and he loved all of them. They were by the different wives. But I would highly recommend this book. If this is Norse mythology, this is not, um, the Marvel series. This is about the original Norse history, and it was very interesting. And and it is available at Shorewood Troy Public Library. Now, the other thing that you might want, because I am going to go through things pretty quickly, and you might want to read one of their two t-shirt quilt books. They are both available here at Shorewood Troy, and you will find them very useful to go back to and reference what I've talked about today. Then, the next thing I want you to know is I have made two t-shirt quilts and I will show them to you at the end of the program. But I want you to know I did not use any reference. I did not let anybody tell me what to do. I was my own guide and I did my own things. Did I do it the right way? Of course not. <laughs> that would just be uh, something that I would not do. But there was a book at one time called Everything I Need to Know I Learned in Kindergarten. And as a former kindergarten teacher, I, I like that book. My daughter gave me this one one time. It's Everything I Need to Know I Learned from a Little Golden Book. I, however, for t-shirt quilts would recommend Everything I Need to Know About Making a T-Shirt Quilt I Learned from YouTube. So what I'm gonna to talk about, to you about today is what I found on YouTube videos. And I found some pretty interesting things. I know in the one quilt that I made, I did use cotton batting. They highly recommend cotton batting. You don't want it to be too thick. So there are different variations in how much cotton, what, what weight of cotton batting you want. And because a t-shirt is typically pretty heavy, you want the lightest weight you can get. The next thing they recommend, and this is very important, there again, even though it's more expensive, you do not want it. You want the lightest weight interfacing you can get. And it's, I bought the iron-on Pellon. You can get it at um, Joanne Fabric for 99 cents a yard. But when I bought it, it was half price, which I suspect that it typically is. So it's 50 cents a yard and well worth every penny you're going to spend on it during the time that you're working on your t-shirt quilt. Other things you will want, and it doesn't have to be a fancy. I like a metal ruler, so I have a metal yardstick. I didn't use this because I didn't need to. I have other measuring devices, which I like better. And I know I brought this one, which Nancy's Notions told me I should get. Nancy's Notions is an online wholesaler. She also does a lot of YouTube videos and it did work out fine, but you do not have to have it. A regular ruler will be fine. I have always used a cutting mat for anything I did quilting wise there again if you don't have one you do not have to have one don't go out and buy a lot of special equipment for this quilt remember you're doing it as a memory for someone you care about not necessarily something you want to invest a lot of money in if you like if you have a rotary mat and you like it you need a rotary cutter and it should be sharp. So if you have one, put a new blade in and you're good to go. If you don't have one, let's see if I can get this closed again. 
Well, I will do it later. You do have to have sharp scissors. If you had a mother who sewed as mine did, you know that you are not allowed to touch the sewing scissors. In my mother's case, they were black handled. In my case, just don't bother them. Get your own scissors. Uh, okay, what else did they suggest that we have? They suggested that we buy these little clippies. And I had never had them before. They're little, you can get them in different colors. The pink ones were cheapest, or red ones were cheapest. So I bought those, and they are called Clover Wonder Clips. And they were very handy for holding that t-shirt stuff together. I have long straight pins, but um, sometimes they would snag and catch your fabric, or these things really didn't. They were they're pretty handy, I, I like those. Then another thing that was suggested was that you use a Jersey ballpoint needle. I did use it, and they wanted you to use an, a, um, an 80 or a size 12 size needle. That worked fine. A regular universal needle also works. So if you have needles already, just go with them. I do happen to like the Schmitz brand for needles. And what else? The little incidentals you might want is, you might want, if you don't feel like you're comfortable making a quarter inch seam, somebody suggested that you buy some of this little mount tape and measure and put a little sticky place where it's right so your fabric goes right along the edge of that piece of tape. And that could be handy if you're not used to sewing a lot. Then one other thing, you, well, two other things you really can't get by without is, one, you can't get by without a sewing machine. My sewing machine is a mid-price sewing machine. If you don't have one, all you need is a straight seam. You don't have to get fancy. You're not going to do any zigzag. You just need a straight seam. However, if you have one, I find a walking foot is very useful with this, this quilt, especially if you plan to quilt it yourself. This will keep the top and the bottom of your fabric moving together because it feeds from the top and the bottom. So if you have one, use it. If you don't have one, you'll be fine without it. The other thing you need is an ironing board and I didn't feel like bringing one so I made a little pad you can also use um, bath towels. I thought mine would be neater if I made something. And my cats thought it was a very nice place to sleep. So it's a little fuzzy. But that's just the way it goes, you know? Cats. Um, so first we're going to do the cutting. And we'll use that rotary cutter I talked about. I have a large t-shirt here. And... Because it's large, I can choose a lot of different sizes for the size I want to make. Now, have I decided what size all my blocks are going to be yet? No. But it's a simple matter. You just cut the t-shirt apart someplace so you can get into that design. And oh, they make it look so much easier and neater on YouTube than mine is going to be. It's just going to be a slipshod job. One thing I did figure out or find out from the videos was that you probably should save some of your backs. Like if you're not going to use everything, you can save your back of your t-shirt in case you need to fill in later. So I'm just cutting this apart wackety whack so I can get to that design. So here's my design. And if there was a room full of people, I would ask you how big you think I need to make that. But since there's not, I'm gonna take this ruler and I will want everything, all the edges to be the same size. So since I went whackety whack, I only have about an inch 
and a quarter at the top that I can cut. And if I were going to use my scissors, I would draw around it. But since I'm not, and I, I'm measuring from the design to the edge of the ruler. And this is one inch, and then this, this particular ruler has a quarter inch allowed for your seam. We'll see what it winds up when we're done. Then I'm gonna move it over so I can do the side. But you can make yours, if you're careful about how you cut that design out and go up to the collar, you can make yours whatever size you feel is appropriate. You could probably go three inches around this shirt because it was a pretty good sized shirt. And so the design again is an inch and a quarter. And we'll hope I got that relatively straight. I think I did. Oops. And from there, we're going to interface it. I got a block cut. It's not real big. Let me see how big it is. It's about 13 inches or less. Next thing to do is interface it. And the reason for interfacing it isn't that you want it stiffer, it's that you want it not to pull one way or the other. If you watch the videos, they will tell you that there are several different kinds of, of interfacing to use and some of them have stretch and some of them don't. I find that this cheap interfacing worked just dandy. The heavier interfacing did not stick for me as well. Some people are very meticulous about how they cut this. There again, I am not. I just cut it, iron it on, and then trim up later. So you're gonna iron from the back side. And one thing they will tell you is that when you're ironing that down, you don't want to move your iron around a lot. It will make it, you'll, it will pull. It will pull your interface and you want to start at an edge. My iron did not get hot. So I wonder if this outlet is, oh yep, there it goes. I didn't move it around, so let's let it get a little hot. iron is showing its age. I've had it for about 18 years and uh, I have not treated it well. I have used a lot of water that would not be recommended. But it still does a job. Steam. Okay, so start at an edge, hold it there for a minute, then you can slide it over to the next spot and the next. And the next, and I forgot to bring my pressing cloth. And what they suggest for pressing cloth, you can buy some different kinds. I use a dish towel. I use one of those old flower sack dish towels. When I was growing up, we used to have a nice linen plastic pressing cloth, but something to put on the top. And why they want you to, if, when you flip it over, why they want you to use something over the top is because sometimes those designs are sticky if you get them too hot and you will melt it. So it's time for me to flip it over and make sure it's well pressed and since I did not use a pressing, bring a pressing top, I am going to use the back side of this t-shirt. It will work dandy. So 
lay something over the top of it, preferably cloth, and press it. And it doesn't matter if I got that wrinkly. My aunt used to tell me, you can iron wrinkles out or you can iron wrinkles in. And I just ironed some in this t-shirt back, but I believe the other side will be fine. And I have also ironed it a little bit to this t-shirt because of that adventure mark. But there it is, interface. And, whoops, crash. So that was simple. And now we'll take those very sharp scissors and trim around that interfacing. And we probably could use a cutter too. But... And as you see, that's a simple matter of taking the time to do it. Next, we're going to look at different kinds of designs that you may run into problems with. This one, okay, so I have a 13 inch block and I want to put, make this part of it, of that same t-shirt quilt also. So I'm going to measure this little star guy and I find that he is right on the line for 13 and a half inches, so he will be just fine until I get ready to do the top part. There is not going to be enough space for him at the top to have that centered. So what I could do, if I use this, I could take some of this navy blue and put a border around it to get it to be the size that I want. So. Just add a border. If you need a little bit more space on your design to match up something else you're doing and you want it to be exactly the same size, add a border. Next. Okay, here's a shirt that I liked because my children have had two Mustangs, Ford Mustangs. And the thing that I wanted to show you about that is this design goes into the neckline. Well, you're going to run into trouble there because you want to use the whole design. And what I did was cut off the block size that I wanted. And there I had to leave some of the sleeve openings to get the whole design. So I didn't cut that part away. Then I took a piece of the back and sewed it flat onto the neckline. So your V-neck still works. You just have to sew it on underneath and then sew it around so the band doesn't come loose and you can use a V-neck should you choose. I also, the horses were red and gray and i decided that i wanted them to stand out a little bit more i think one of those cars was a red car and um the other one might have been black i don't remember but so i went around those and i think i used a double thread to sew those so that those two horses would stand out a little bit more so you can do some embellishment should you choose to And then we come to how to sew those blocks together. And one of the demonstrations did a really good job with that in that it made a point of how you press your blocks. If you ever grew up sewing, you know that that iron is as important a tool as your sewing machine. If you don't press your seams, your mother's going to yell at you. So, 
So keep that in mind. Um, in this one, the lady pointed out that if you press your seams one way when you're sewing everything together, then the next row should be in the opposite way. So on the back of this, you will see that, well, let's do the front first. On the front, you see that I put a whole bunch of squares together. Because as I said, I don't wear this kind of t-shirt and so I didn't have a lot of things for examples. So when you're sewing them together on the back, I pressed everything to one side, but in these little corners where I wanted things to match up, I pressed one up and I pressed one down. The next one up, the next one down. This one up, this one down. So that when I turn it over, all those squares come out even. You don't have it going sideways, squonky. But I also have everything's pressed to one side or the other so that it, and there I have used my little clippies to hold things together. And isn't that wonderful? So much easier than pins. And then when you get to one of these, you just unpop it and it's done. And I chose to use this one in the center because my daughter is a reader and that's what she would be doing on a beautiful day, sitting indoors reading. And I thought this was a really neat little saying too, so I, I like that one too. Now, next. This one. I have this patch and on the patches that are going to go with it I have put a border and so I'm going to show you how to put a border on and I hope I have enough fabric here to do that. I think I do. Okay. My machine, I think, has too small a starting stitch, so I just change the stitch length a little bit and get it going. This fabric is one of those kind that is the same on both sides, so I'm not gonna worry about which is the right side and which is the wrong side, and I'm just gonna sew it on. So I match up my edge at the top, and I make a straight seam and it's going to be a quarter inch seam. Nothing fancy, no zigzag, nothing that you can't do at home. Just, and you will notice I did not change to my walking foot. It's going to be just fine. And from here, I clip it off. And I'm going to clip off this end too. Now, the next piece. My iron is there, it is not hot. I'm just gonna finger press along that edge so that it lays down while I'm sewing across. You just take your thumbnail and run down the edge. Very handy to know if you are a quilter. Next piece. You just match it up to the next edge. And I press that seam to the outside of the, the design. So I'm going to try to keep that going that direction when I sew it down. Now the truth is I am not really a quilter. 
I, I know how to do a lot of things, but it is not my typical love. But my mother was a quilter. She made quilts and designed quilts and had her own patterns and was wonderful. But I know how to sew. And that's all this is, is knowing how to sew. So on the next edge, I see I did not bring enough fabric, I don't think, unless I sew. Oh, this, yeah, there will be. I think this is double. And then I can sew something together to get the last part. So there again, I'm just gonna finger press. Sew it down. going to put a um, PowerPoint online for you and it will tell you how many t-shirts you need for the size of quilt you want and that kind of thing. I, I forgot to look at my notes and tell you but it will be there and I just followed what somebody else said. Now I'm to the end where I have not quite a big enough piece of fabric so I'm going to sew those two together. And it may take three. I have three. So there again, you could just cut, use your quarter inch seam, sew that together, and you are good to go. Nothing magic, just plain simple. enough now. Yes, it'll get there. You saw how to, if you decide that you want to have a quilt with borders around it, you saw that it's quite simple to put a border around the outside of your block. One thing I didn't mention, but I'm going to mention at this point, is that if you want ideas for how to make a, a quilt, a t-shirt quilt design, all you got to do is go to Pinterest and look up t-shirt quilts. You will find all kinds of designs for your possible t-shirt quilt. I finished this quilt, even though I might. Um, it doesn't matter to me what anybody feels about it. And it's in the end, I will show you how to pin a quilt together if you're going to tie it or if you're going to machine quilt it. I will advise you that if you're going to machine quilt a very large quilt yourself, it is difficult because you can't get all that quilt under your uh, headboard very easily. However, tying the quilt is fine and there are people who will Machine quilt a quilt for you for a price. If you're going to have yours quilted then by someone else, then you don't need to buy the uh, cotton batting because they will have their own. You don't need to buy the backing because they will probably, unless you want to buy it for a certain design, they will have their own and you're good to go. So here's what I have cut out 
and made up. And I like this quilt or this t-shirt because my family lived in Gaze for 34 years. And Gaze is the home of the two-story outhouse. And if you wonder how that works, well, they won't tell you, but it's really quite simple. When this outhouse was built, there was a store next to it. And so in this, if you were a renter in the store, like you had an apartment upstairs in the store, instead of having to go downstairs, out the door, and out to the outhouse, you could walk off in the terrace and go out the door. But it, it's a, a secret. Anyway, I told you the secret. The other thing is that um, my family and I lived in the house that was owned by the man who owned the store. So this, I'm gonna put it at the center of my quilt. Now this is really mostly my daughter's stuff. She likes John Luke Picard. And I don't know where I'm gonna put him for sure because I have two of him, one's in color and one's in not. Louisa May Alcock. If you've read Little Women, you know that um, Louisa May was all about getting rid of the corset. And that's what she's saying is we need to get healthy. We need to get rid of the corset. We need to get out and get exercise. So she was a woman way ahead of her time. And that might go by John Luke because the colors are similar. We have some more. Oh, this was my daughter's. This comes with a, our granddaughter's. It comes with a pair of shoes. No special meeting to anybody. Don't know if I would use that. I did not put a border around it, but it could go up here with these guys. Everything can be moved around. In the quilt that I do, I. I'm not a very good planner. If you're a good planner, lay your t-shirts out after you get them cut to design. You can make a graph, you can do whatever you want, but I don't plan. I just kind of lay it out and see how it works out. If I were at home, I would lay it out on my bed and see what works. My daughter was a Kiwanis, Kiwanian, whatever they are. So this was her t-shirt. And we might put it there. And we might, that means if we put it there, we might have to put a border around John Luke. Then we've got Data, another Star Trek man. John Luke and Pencil. <laughs> Blue, blue and blue go together. Let's put that next to gaze. So you just have to kind of lay it out and see what your plan is if you have one. This was a summer reading shirt from the Shorewood Troy Public Library. There again, we got blue. This is gonna be a long skinny quilt if we do it this way. So it probably wouldn't work out this way. We'd probably do another row over that way and this is another feminist shirt the radical notion that women are people not so radical after all is it if you want your t-shirt your quilts to have a make a statement then I guess you have to have t-shirts that have a statement to make yeah so far, I do not like the way this is laying out, but as I said, if I were home, I would be doing it on my bed. Wonder Woman. She goes very well with feminism, doesn't she? So then I, after I get these things all laid out and I see if it's gonna, I might decide that I need some more t-shirts. I might decide I need more borders. It is a matter of what you decide. It is not a matter of how somebody else wants to do it. It is your project, unless you're doing it as a professional for someone else. You get to decide, okay? 
This is the last one. Don't know where I put. I probably put it next to Data. I think the colors look pretty good together. Or else next to John Luke. Anyway, there's your decision. Your decision making power. Um, I do like the fabric that I had for borders for the most part. And but it's all a matter of taste. Next up, how to put your quilt together if you're going to work on it yourself. Get this out of the way. So you make a sandwich. And I'm sure you all know that. You decide what you're going to use for the back. You decide what kind of batting you're going to use. And I've got water on that too. Then you pin it together. So as I said, I don't have a lot of t-shirts. I just use the backs of shirts to make this. And if I were going to finish it, I would think that it would make a very good pad for baby to play on. It's not delightful looking, but it is certainly serviceable. It would go in the washer, come out nice, it would be soft, and it would be something you wouldn't care if you spit up all over. So I have, I had a lot of this fabric left from the project you'll see in a minute. So I used the butterflies that I had used before. I was lazy and I did not back my t-shirts here. And I have to tell you, they were much more difficult to work with without the backing. Some of them really stretched. They did not look neat. But as I said, I didn't think I'd ever finish it, so it didn't really matter. But I did want to show you, there's the top, the sandwich, and the bottom. And I have some safety pins that you might want to look at closer. They're a little bent pin and they are really handy if you're putting together a quilt because you can grasp them pretty easy from the front and the back and they'll give you enough room to pin them together. So I was crawling around on the floor with the cats and pin this together. This one isn't so big that I couldn't have done it on the dining room table, but I think I did it on the floor. And if you have cats or probably a dog too, you will find that if you have it on the floor and you're working on it, they will want to be right on top of it. So that's just so you know. And then this quilt I would tie together and, and I, I would not, you could, it's, this is small enough. If you chose to, you could stitch in the ditch all the way around. And if you are not a quilter, don't know what stitch in the ditch means, it just means that you get as close to the line where everything's put together and sew it. You don't have to go through the middle. You don't have to do anything else. Stitch in the ditch would be fine for this little serviceable quilt or you could tie the corners and maybe once in between and you would be dandy. Next, I'll show you one more way that you can quilt your quilt. I was gonna show the whole thing, but I decided it was too much time consuming for one program and it would require another program. It would be throwing too much information at you at one time. But there is an alternative way to quilt your quilt, and you can find it on YouTube if you want to look and go ahead and do it. And that is to take your block, cut it out, interface it, and then quilt it. And this one, I just did a zigzag design all over the place. And this one, I quilted around the truck and then I did lines down the front. 
And then this one, I thought she was really special. And so it was, it must have been a breast cancer shirt. I didn't even really get it small. I just quilted the pattern through here and I've quilted all the way around her. So, and then it's called um, Quilt As You Go. So look, if you're interested in doing it that way, then you take a strip and sew those strips together and then do the same thing on the back. And you will see that on all of these, I use the back side of the quilt or the t-shirt for the back side of the quilt. And if anybody has any real interest in doing that, we will do that sometime. Okay. One more thing, and that is I will show you what I have done in the past. My daughter and son-in-law like to travel. And so they had gone on different trips and she had t-shirts from her trips. Well, I didn't know anything about making t-shirt quilts. I see that I probably did not interface them because this guy's pretty loose and wobbly. But anyway, they turned out. I did embellish them somewhat because I thought they would be better that way. This one, um, I, I, I don't like rhubarb, but I thought the donkey was really pretty. And um, it was a wine winery they went to. And I thought that was just kind of a fascinating concept that they would make wine out of rhubarb. But anyway, so I embellished little flowers and I embellished the words, just embroidered on it. I like the buffalo. So I did a little fancy stuff to make him look a little bit more. And I thought the trees might pop out a little better. And that's perfectly fine to do. And as I said, I don't think I interface those. I had no design. As you can see, I just put things together and filled in spots. I like this Indian a lot. So I made his be I put some beads on him. Put some things on his feathers. And of course, there's the ever popular card catalog and the gnomes. Paul doesn't like gnomes. I thought they needed to be special. Then for Emily's, which I did this year, and Jenny did suggest that I look at the book and interface it. So I did do that. She wanted, they were going to take Emily to see Harry Styles last year, and then all the co concerts were canceled. So she bought a bunch of Harry Styles t-shirts, and I put them together to make the quilt. Now why I chose the rainbow, or the, the butterfly, oh I see it needs to be washed too. Butterfly fabric was because this is Harry Styles tattoos and he has a big butterfly on his chest. So I embellished the butterfly a little bit. That's the only one I did and everything else I just put together. One of these, this one just says Styles instead of Harry Styles. We decided it was a Japanese import and they they didn't spell Harry right, so I cut Harry off. This one was my favorite one. It got to be center stage. The others, I thought about trying to embroider the guys who were in one direction with him, and I didn't think that was gonna work. I did kind of go around the one direction, and I did kind of try to write his name in embroidery, which my machine, my machine is not an embroidery machine. I just kind of freehanded it. The other thing about this quilt is that it was a mess to put together. 
And the reason for that was my choice of fabric for the backing. And I decided to use kind of a stretchy velour that was soft on both sides and it was stretchy. So nothing really went together easy, but I think it turned out fine. I did not use batting on this one because that velour didn't need it. It was gonna be plenty heavy without it. And when I get it home, I am going to throw it in the washer. But that's all I can say about that. I just kind of put it together, no plan. And here it is. And my granddaughter likes it. The other thing I think I wouldn't have done again was I probably wouldn't have put these little flannel pieces in it. But I thought that it would brighten it up a little bit in some spots that the green and red here match the watermelon to make it bigger. Eh, don't know. Anyway, she's happy with it. And that is all I have to tell you.